Everything I touch turns to darkness at some point if I touch it within myself. But everything Jesus puts his hand on turns to light. Amen? So I wrote this song about coming out of my darkness one day and, and into his light. And it was this ballad that had strings and, and kitchen sinks and orchestra and choirs going on it and all that stuff. And I didn't really like it. So I sat down one night on the bus and I thought, now how would they have done this at the Alabama Singing Convention in 1942? This is how I think they might have done it. It's called Out of My Darkness and Into His Light. Jesus' blood has won the fight Into his likeness What a wonderful sight Making my way into his kingdom so bright Out of my darkness And into his light Out of my darkness Jesus' blood has won the fight Into his likeness What a wonderful sight Occupied. The victim of a cruel death was tightly sealed inside But then the victim turned to victor when the stone was rolled away He stepped outside, the darkness died, his light remains today His light remains today Out of my darkness, Jesus' blood has won My bone marrow transplant, let me, let me bring you up to date on something before we sing this last song. I appreciate you guys. Uh, honestly, I felt like a big distraction this week. Every time I walk around, I've got that stinking mask on, and believe me, it stinks when you had Mexican food and it's blowing right back in your face. <laughs> but that honestly is the only way that I could have come here. I'm really not supposed to be out. And Tuesday last week, uh, well this week actually, I left after we sang on Monday night drove back to Nashville, flew to Houston the next day. And uh, the bone marrow result that day showed that they found more disease in my bone marrow and more disease in my blood. And that doesn't mean that the bone marrow transplant failed. It means that about 70% of the people who survive it have to have what they call a top off. And so they're gonna start me, that's a nice little word that cancer doctors use because it don't sound so bad. What they're gonna do is I'm gonna have chemo for the next four weeks and, and then a, another infusion of my dad's stem cells. I told him it was because my dad was my 100% donor, perfect donor. 
and my, my stem cells are 71 years old. <laughs> They're trying to fight the cancer if they can just get over to it, you know what I'm saying? But I gotta, I gotta be honest with you, I have experienced in this last nine months the deepest depression that I've ever known. One night when I was in the hospital waiting for the bone marrow transplant, I was in an eight by 10 room. My wife, the only way I saw her was with mask on. She had on the little hat and the little booties and the long robe and I was literally cut off from the world. And I'm not good at that. I like to be around people. And so about fourth day, four days into that, I got real depressed. And it got worse and worse. I couldn't read my Bible. The words would blur before me. I couldn't. I tried to call friends. They didn't have words to say to me. I prayed. It felt like the heavens were made out of brass and my prayers were just bouncing back on me. And I was so desperate in the middle of the night one time, I started thinking, now, what did Paul and Silas do in jail? They didn't ask somebody to come in and talk them through. They didn't ask for somebody to hear their case. They started singing. Well, I didn't have a voice. As you can tell, I'm so dry right now. So much medication is drying. I, I didn't have hardly any voice, but I started singing, What a friend we have in Jesus. Suddenly it began to break a little bit. All my sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God. Well, I've realized I'm on to something. I'm from Arkansas and I'm ignorant, but I realized I was on to something. <laughs> when I got to the line that said, Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer, I felt the Holy Spirit come into that room and I felt better instantly. I can't tell you that all of your physical pains will be healed miraculously because I don't know that. Every healing is temporary. And I hope I get a one that I can be as old as Les Beasley up here slapping around on a bass guitar. That would be awesome. But if God calls me home before the next convention, I want to tell you what happened. The next day at MD Anderson, if you say you're depressed, they write it down on a chart. Well, buddy, I got, I got delivered about 3 in the morning. The next day, a guy walked in that I'd never seen before. This guy walks in. This guy walks in, he's got, a, he's got a sweater vest and a tie on, and it's April. You know, he's being cool. And he says, uh, I'm from the psychiatry department. My name is so-and-so. I'm the chief psychiatrist. I'm here to help you. And I said, you're about 10 hours late. Thank God. <laughs> 